So here we go again, guys. It's time to have another look at NASA's vaunted SLS, or Space Launch System, or the more appropriately named piece of shit overpriced Space Launch System. And this is all we've ever really got to see of it. There have been some photos of it in the midst of manufacturing, being rolled out to central cores, etc., etc. But so far, we still don't have a functioning prototype. But NASA seems absolutely determined to use this to go to the moon. By the way, that water is used to suppress sound. And there she goes, over 8 million pounds of thrust, admittedly an incredibly powerful rocket. Everything should look very familiar about it. Mostly stolen from the space shuttle. But what happens if we can't get rid of it? What happens if Boeing wins out and NASA ends up keeping this thing. Are we over? I mean, there's a lot more to Artemis besides just the SLS. For example, the Lunar Gateway, a station designed to orbit the moon and act as a staging area for lunar expeditions. Is this also a piece of junk? It's been criticized enough but is it true? I mean, it's many detractors call it a station without a mission. That anything it can do, the ISS can do better. And that we should just simply build a base on the moon. Is this another ill-conceived idea? Just as bad as the SLS? get started I just wanted to mention something that I heard apparently the last video that I did about the UAE's uh, mission to Mars got played for a bunch of school children in the United Arab Emirates and was extremely well received I am honored I never imagined that anything that I would produce would be played for a bunch of school kids and apparently the teacher was very pleased with it as well so, in any event, to all those folks all the way across the planet, thank you. In the meantime, I've been thinking about this whole situation with the SLS, the Lunar Gateway, Artemis, all that sort of thing, and I can't help but wonder, I mean, as awful as Boeing is doing, as over budget as they are, I think that there is a significant possibility that they are going to get to the moon before SpaceX. That they are going to finally, after all of this incompetence and all of this over budget work, they are going to manage to complete the SLS before SpaceX can complete the Starship and they are going to put boots on the moon first. And that is going to convince NASA that they have the winning combination, at least for the moment. What do we do then? Is this just a project doomed to failure? If Trump loses the election, as is entirely possible, is the whole thing going to change? Is everything going to get scrapped in favor of a resolution that just uh, got put through a large section of the house that is absolutely atrocious and by the way still keeps the SLS. Is that just what's destined to happen? Or 
Can we find a way to make this thing work in spite of SLS? And in my opinion, it is vaguely doable if you have the Lunar Gateway and the cooperation of companies like SpaceX and other private space corporations. It's going to require a change in mission. But nevertheless, this is the only way this is going to work because under the current parameters, the SLS will visit the Lunar Gateway once a year for 30 days and the other 11 months, the Gateway will remain unoccupied, carrying out some robotic missions apparently, which could very easily be done without a station. No one's going to support that in the long run. Nobody. We will complete the Lunar Gateway only to end up having it crash into the lunar surface or just to leave it abandoned. Just a pointless waste of money. In my opinion, there's another way. All right, as you can see, I'm putting the ISS on kind of a... Uh, repeating display because there's going to be a hidden ISS challenge somewhere in this video, but that having been said, let's have a look at the criticism here. Um, so, we've got former NASA astronaut uh, Terry um, Burtz, who was the pilot of STS-130, uh, Space Shuttle Endeavor, and he says that this is going to shackle human exploration, not enable it. That is to say, the Lunar Gateway. Um, Robert Zubrin of the Mars Society, he's saying that this is NASA's worst plan yet. Um, and then one of the points he makes is that we should have a base on the moon because that's where the shielding from the radiation is. Whereas he makes the statement that putting them in a station would expose human subjects to irradiation, a form of medical research for which a number of Nazi doctors were hanged at Nuremberg. Boy, I thought I was rough. So, anyway, um, then, you know, it goes on and on. Gerald Black, um, retired aerospace engineer, um, He's saying that stopping at the Lunar Gateway serves no useful purpose and cost propellant. Um, you know, these criticisms go on and on and are led pretty much by Buzz Aldrin. He's one of the biggest detractors using the Gateway as a staging area for robotic or human miss uh, missions to the lunar surface is absurd. And he questions the benefits of sending the crew to an intermediate point in space just to pick up another ship and go down, etc., etc. Now, as far as positive arguments are concerned, uh, uh, huh. Now, frankly, all this stuff is starting to piss me off. Why? Well, we've got all these extremely well-educated experts completely dissing this concept without even paying any attention as to why it was done in the first place. I mean, they're missing the whole damn point. Let me show you why. So some of you may have heard me talk about this in the past, so bear with me. Here's the Apollo approach. You have a research spot on the surface where you're going to set down with the intention of eventually setting up a base, hoping that it's the right spot. With Artemis, you have a number of areas pre-staged, researched, and a number of robotic facilities already established. And now here comes the Lunar Gateway highly elliptical orbit and it's expandable of course and it's also can be used as a communications relay so you can add habitation modules research facilities whatever you like so you can get very very close to the moon and in the process you can have the flexibility to set your landers down pretty much anywhere you want to on the moon. Whereas the 
moon direct approach doesn't have that kind of flexibility. So here comes the lander. And now here comes the Orion. The Orion docks, the astronauts board the station and they go down in their lander, although the configuration of the lander has yet to be determined because private companies are supposed to be taking care of that. And they set down, in this case, on the South Pole because we're hoping that there's quite a lot of water there. In fact, we know there is. It seems like the best place to establish a base. You return. However, the thing I don't like about this is that the lander is not reusable. So you only get one shot at it and you have to go back in the Orion. It doesn't have to go this way. The space can be used for a variety of other purposes. Because as you can see, it's fully expandable. Right now with habitation modules, research laboratories, logistics, robotics for robotic missions to the surface. So here's the current problems with NASA's plans. You take an Orion to the Lunar Gateway, you take it down in a non-reusable lander, unless the corporate entities that are going to build this make it reusable, which they really should so that they can make several trips down to the moon without having to worry about all of that then they can at least make some kind of use of the fact that the gateway can orbit the moon in a number of different configurations and then make multiple landings. And on top of that, they can extend the length of the astronaut's stay. Right now, it's limited to 30 days because of the Orion's limited abilities. But if you could resupply it on a regular basis, you could extend out the length of the astronaut's stay by quite a lengthy time. On the Salyut 6 and Salyut 7, which by the way, those were Russian space stations, by the way, really tiny ones, sometimes the cosmonauts would stay as long as 140 days. We could very much be looking at at least something that resembles the idea of going to the moon to stay if we went with that kind of configuration. And not only that, if we're worried about the whole radiation thing and we think the moon is safer because of that, well, that's not the whole point of the Lunar Gateway. The Lunar Gateway is supposed to teach us how to live in deep space without support, without a subsurface radiation shield like the moon would provide. We're not going to have that while we're traveling between Earth and Mars. We suddenly have a solar storm. We got nothing to rely upon as far as that's concerned, except an anti-radiation bunker like the one that NASA's coming up with. We can test these sorts of things on the Lunar Gateway. We can't do that on a moon base. All of these things are so damn obvious, it drives me crazy. So what really is the problem here? I think the problem is we're just focusing too much on going to the moon and not what the long-term objective of Artemis is. And by the way, if you're looking at a resupply ship and also a reusable lander, I've got a pretty good solution for you there as well. Yeah, this was an easy guess. A modified Falcon Heavy could bring a Dragon capsule to resupply the station pretty much at will, allowing astronauts to stay way beyond the 30-day limit. And then a Crew Dragon could be used to take astronauts to the surface, and its engine capability would be more than capable of lifting off four times that of what the Apollos had. And most importantly, I think, the station could also act as an isolation ward for any unfriendly bugs that we happen to bring back in future missions should we have a ship coming back from Mars or any place else in deep space. 
You know what the problem with the Gateway and the whole Artemis project is? We're just not being creative enough. We don't have to have 30 days on the moon once a year just because that's all the Orion can handle. We can certainly resupply the station and we don't have to worry about radiation issues because that's the whole point of having the Artemis, to train us how to deal with radiation emergencies when we go to Mars. And we can use the base as a mobile surveying tool to determine dozens and dozens of landing sites on the moon before we decide where we're going to build a permanent installation. There's so many flexible ways to use the station. Huh. I think it would be very interesting to uh, hear from some of the rest of you as to what this station could be used for as well. But the fact of the matter is, even if we end up having to use the SLS, which I really hope we don't, the possibility of staying on the moon long term still exists as long as we're just creative enough. I'm the angry astronaut and stay angry about space.